For this lesson, I'm going to be showing you two different ways to make a torn paper ocean landscape. For this lesson, you're going to need a couple of different materials. You're going to need some thicker white paper, like some watercolor paper or some drawing paper, scissors, markers and a pencil, some glue, watercolors, and my little watercolor hack is also using some food coloring, some salt, a water cup with some paint brushes, an old rag or towel, and then don't forget to have a messy mat to cover your area and keep your space clean while you work. To begin, you want to make two or three of these watercolor papers that we are gonna use for our ocean waves. You can create these papers using watercolor and salt, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make these papers. Again, I recommend making two or three so you have a few extras on hand just in case. To begin creating our watercolor papers, I began to prep my paper by wetting it first and then I'm using my watercolor to paint in my blues and my greens. I actually chose to use some of my food coloring here because these colors are darker and more vibrant. I sprinkled the salt on top and I let it sit to dry so it can start to make that water-like effect as it dries. I also used a little bit of some of my purple watercolor to blend that in here as well. And all I'm doing is just blending the colors around while it is wet, sprinkling a little bit of salt on there and letting it dry. I can also create a watered effect by dropping water drops onto the paper. So all you have to do for that is take your paintbrush, dip it in some water, and fling some of those water drops onto the paper. And then you're going to leave it alone and let that dry. As it starts to dry, you're going to see it start separating out some of the watercolor and creating these really cool water spot papers. And I recommend using the cool colors to make your ocean waves. If you are creating this artwork, you want your paper tall or vertical. This artwork is short or horizontal. Be aware of the position of your paper when you begin. For my flip-flop artwork, I'm going to create a diagonal wiggle line across my paper, knowing this bottom half will be the sand and the top will be the water. And on my other paper, I'm going to draw a line straight across, knowing that the bottom will be my water and the top will be my sky. For the bottom half of this artwork, I'm going to be painting in my sand using a mix of yellow and brown. And I'm blending those colors together while the watercolor is still wet. going to quickly clean my brush off and then I'm going to paint in the sky on my other picture. I'm going to choose to do a sunset colored sky but you could really paint your sky any color you want. So for my sky I'm going to do a mix of my warm colors red, yellow, and orange and I'm blending those colors together while the watercolor is wet not painting down past that line since the bottom half is going to be for the water. And once both of my artworks are dry, they are going to look like this, and then I can begin adding in the water. I'm gonna choose those papers that I painted earlier as the water, and I'm gonna tear them into strips. But it's gonna be really important when we tear these strips because we are layering them together to create the ocean waves on our pictures. And it's gonna be important to make sure that you're tearing your ocean waves in the correct direction. I need to make sure that my water paper is facing the same direction as my background of my picture. So if it's horizontal, I have it facing horizontally, and if it's vertical, I have it facing vertically. Then I can begin to tear the strips across that paper to create the ocean waves. So here you can see I have that paper facing horizontally, so I have torn the paper for my ocean wave horizontally as well. This way I make sure that the paper fits and I'm not having to piece together pieces as I go. I added a little bit of glue onto the back and I want to match up that bottom flat side to the flat bottom of my paper. This way I have a nice even wave to start so you can see it matches up nicely to the bottom edge. Then I'm going to continue to tear more strips and I'm going to focus on that white edge as well. That's going to be super important when I tear all of my strips. I'm going to tear enough to match up all the way to the top so it fills in all that white space. But as you can see as I'm layering my pieces that little white edge is kind of disappearing. I like to have the white edges on both of my strips because that creates creates that kind of top of the wave, that crest of the wave, and it makes my water have more depth. So I'm gonna go back and just tear along the edges so I have white on both the top and the bottom of each strip. Then I can layer them together and start gluing them onto my ocean landscape. I'm gonna layer them one on top of another, not leaving too much space between them, just kind of covering one on top of the next. And if I have any pieces that are hanging off on the side when I am done, I can just take my scissors and use that to trim off any extras. And for my other landscape, I'm going to repeat the same process. This time I'm going to mix up two different papers with some different colors on them. One of them has more greens and one has more blues. I'm going to do the same thing, making sure I glue that first piece on that matches up to the flat edge of the paper. And I'm going to count to 10 seconds to make sure it really sticks on there well. Then I'm going to go ahead and tear the rest of my strips, making sure I tear on that white edge onto both sides. And then I'm going to begin layering them on top of each other to start creating that ocean waves coming in onto the shore. 
And just to add a little bit of some difference as the waves get closer to the shore, instead of just creating a straight edge that goes all the way across, I'm going to tear two strips together and create some diagonal lines and tear those and piece them together as they come onto the shore. And again, like we talked about earlier, if any pieces hang off the side, just use your scissors to trim them off and that way they will match up to the edge of the paper and you would never even know that those pieces were too big to begin with. So here I am just finishing adding in those extra waves coming onto the shore, gluing them kind of diagonally and trimming off the extras as needed. And now that our ocean waves are done, we can begin adding in the other details to our landscapes. This picture, I'm gonna be adding in two flip-flops on the shore. So I'm gonna use two extra pieces of white paper. I'm gonna sketch out my flip-flop shape, layer those two pieces together, and cut out my two flip-flops. Then I can choose to use my different art materials to color in some designs. I chose to use orange and pink markers to create some stripes on my flip-flops. You could draw on the straps of your flip-flop, but I chose to cut out two V shapes, two skinny Vs that are a little bit longer than the edges of my flip-flops. And I'm gonna use these to create some 3D straps on my flip-flops. They're gonna pop up off my flip-flop. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have two of them cut out. Then I'm going to bend them just a little bit, put a dot of glue at the top of the V and glue that down to the top of the flip-flop and bend those extra pieces around the back side of the flip-flop where I will then glue them onto the bottom of the flip-flop. And then once those are glued, on I will then make sure that I hold it for 10 seconds to make sure it really sticks and then I can put glue on the bottom side of the flip-flop and I can stick those onto my landscape I also chose to use my crayons to draw out some little shells on the beach and I even used my crayons to draw directly onto the sand just giving a few little specks of color to complete a little bit of some details in the sand and make my final look for my flip-flop landscape for my other landscape, I can also add in some other details, such as the sun. I colored in a yellow circle with marker, shaded it a little bit with some orange crayon, and I glued that into my sky. I also wanted to add in some sailboats, so I drew out a sailboat using a pencil on an extra scrap piece of paper, colored that in with some marker, and I can then choose to add that anywhere I would like onto my landscape. I could also create a sailboat by drawing the sailboat again, but cutting each piece out separately, so it's kind of like puzzle piecing together a little sailboat. Or if you don't want to use marker, you could always use any sort of boxes or items you have around the house that have some color, and you can cut out some sailboats as well. I also used some extra white paper to create some puffy, fluffy clouds in the sky, and then I wanted to make sure I glued everything down really well, all the clouds and all of my sailboats. Then, once everything is glued, I can come back and do some detailing, like I used my blue crayon here to kind of go back over my clouds and create some more puffs. I used my markers and crayons on my sailboats to create some stripes and some polka dots, and even drew in a little flag. And that completes my ocean landscapes.